Hello. Today I'm going to take a look at installing Samba on Lubuntu 18.04. So first, if we open a terminal, we go for LX terminal. There are two files which we need. So we type sudo apt install. We want Samba. And then the GUI is system dash config dash Samba. Press return, put your password in, press return. And I put the wrong password in, try again. Second time lucky. It tells you everything it wants to install, just say yes. So we just wait for them files to download. Now they're being installed. Okay, and one would hope that's all you need to do. So we go to System Tools. We now have Samba. Click on it. And we have an error. It's not working. So if we again go to the menu item, right click on it and go to properties. We find the command. So the command to open it should be system config samba. So highlight that, copy it, type sudo and paste, press return. I think the main part we're looking at here is the system error at the end. It says could not open configuration file, etc. libuser conf. So it's that one there. Highlight it, right click, copy, type sudo touch and paste that file, press return. Now if we press the up arrow to go back to the command, press return and it opens. So far so good. So we close that. So let's go to the menu, system tools, click on Samba. We still get an error when we click on it on the menu. Now the problem here, so we right click on it again, go to properties, and we go to the command. GKSU is depreciated and it's no longer installed on Ubuntu. So we can't use that anymore. Should be updated to use policy kit. But I don't think this software seems to be supported anymore. So a workaround is to change GKSU to sudo. And then select execute in terminal emulator. In some file properties, it will just say open in terminal, but you have to change the command to sudum system config samba and execute in terminal emulator, or it might say open in terminal. So we click on OK. So now if we go back to our menu item, click on it, terminal window will pop up, will ask for your password. Click return and now the Samba server configuration will open. So, so far so good. We have that part working. 
Next part, we need to see if we have any file shares. Uh, Lubuntu uses PC Man FM. So we click on Go Network. Well, it's found itself. It doesn't appear to have found any of the other computers on the network. I've also installed Nemo on here. I just want to see if uh, Nemo will work. No, it seems like all the file managers are the same. So for the next step, we go back to the terminal. We type CD for change directory space forward slash etc forward slash samba press return now we need to edit a file called smb.conf so if we do ls just to make sure we're in the right place and that's the one we need to edit there but before we edit it we need to make a copy just in case something goes wrong we can reinstate the copy so we type sudo cp for copy name of the file that exists at the moment which is smb.conf and then a name for the copy file which we're going to call smb.conf underscore old press return type ls again and now we can see we've got smb.conf and a copy of it too so now we have a copy we don't have to worry about editing it if anything goes wrong we can just restore the old one so now we need to edit the comp file. So we type sudo nano smb.conf press return and it will open in nano. Now if you use the down arrow You'll see the cursor over here moving down. Go below global, return, make a space, and type all in lowercase client max protocol equals Space N capital N capital T one return. That's all we need to do. So now you do Control X to save it. Bottom here it says save modified buffer. Type Y for yes. Then it says file name to write smb.conf. Press return. And that's done. So after typing that, uh, you will need to reboot the computer, which I'm going to do now. Okay, now we've rebooted, we should be able to go into our file manager. Go to go, click on network, and now all the other computers on the network are showing up. Let's just make sure we can look at one. Okay, this is asking for a password. It doesn't actually need one, so we just click on connect. And that one's working fine. Now if we go back to our GUI. Add a public share file. Click on plus. Browse to where the file is. 
I want to share public. Click on OK. Optionally put in a description. Public files. Going to make it writable, visible, access. Allow access to everyone. Click on OK. So now that folder is shared on the network. The only problem I found at the moment is when you do a public share, other people can see it and read it, but they can't alter it. It retains the permissions that the folder on your computer have. So if we go into our file manager, and that one was public, right click on it, go to properties where it says access control, change content at the moment permission is only given to the owner change that to anyone so if you want a public folder that anyone can add, delete, etc. files from change that to anyone and do OK do you want the permission changes to apply to all files in the folder click yes so now anyone on the network will have access to that folder and will be able to delete, edit, add files without any permission. So it's up to you how you do that. If it's on a device where you're likely to be connecting to external networks, then perhaps it's not a good idea to do that, but it's up to you. Now if we go back to our Samba server configuration, if you want to set up a file that is password protected, First of all, you have to create a user. So you go into Samba Users, Add User, Unix Username. Scroll down till you find your name. And give it a Windows username. Now this username and password are what you will use to log on when you try and open the folder from another computer. But I'm going to keep mine the same. Same username, Tony. And a very cryptic password. Click on OK. OK. So now you can add another folder. Browse, let's add videos, go OK, make it writable, make it visible, click on access, and this time you'll see your name will appear. So put a tick in the box, click on OK. So now when you go to open that folder from another computer, it will ask for your username and password. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. I will put all the commands in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've found it of use. So for now, goodbye and hopefully see you in the next video.